Good morning. What we're going to look at today is engine vacuum testing. We use vacuum testing to verify whether an engine has a significant mechanical problem or not. Keep in mind, our engine is basically just an air pump. Vacuum is created by the piston going down and the restriction of the throttle plate. So if the throttle plate is restricted, i.e. being closed, we're going to have a difference in pressure on this side than we do on this side. So out here is my atmospheric pressure. In here is my manifold vacuum pressure, which is going to be less than atmospheric. So that we call that vacuum. Right here is my idle air control motor. My idle air control motor allows air to bypass the throttle plate. That's why I have to do this on a warm engine. Now I've previously warmed up this engine, so it's all set to go. I have the tools I need here. I have a vacuum gauge, which reads from zero up to 30 inches of mercury, although we'll never get there. We're gonna be up around 20 to 25 inches. This is an adapter. And this is a piece of hose that I can use between a place, a source I can find on the engine. I can adapt it onto this hose, so therefore I can do it. I also have a special set of pliers here. These pliers are made to grab hoses, so I don't have to worry about cutting my hands or tearing the hose. I can twist the hose or twist the, the nipple and pull it off and therefore not damage it. I also have our instructions here on vacuum testing, and I'll go over it. And step one is connect the vacuum gauge to an intake manifold vacuum source. So if I come over here and look at the engine, I can see at the lower part of the intake manifold, I have a nipple here. This is my stand engine. This originally went to the brake booster. I could also go right here. Here's another vacuum source. This goes to my purge solenoid. So I really want to get some, I have another vacuum source over here, which goes to my PCV. So there's multiple vacuum sources. I'm going to go with this one because it's the easiest. And I'm going to grab my pliers, grab it, and twist it off. Now I can put my hose and take my adapter and put it on here. And then hook this up like so, and now I have my gauge. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna start the engine because it wants me to step two, what is my vacuum at idle? So I'm gonna start it up. Oops, had it disabled from the last test. So I'm gonna start it up and I'm gonna let it idle a little bit because I've been running, I'm gonna clear it out a little bit. We want the engine to get stabilized before we take a reading. And so we're sitting here, I want to give it a little bit, but it looks like I'm sitting at 19 inches of mercury right now. So that is well within my range. It's on the paper of 70 to 17 to 21 inches of mercury. And we can see that the needle is steady. The next step it wants me to do on step three is disable one cylinder by removing the injector connector and, in court, and record the idle vacuum. So I'm gonna come in here to my injector connector. I'm gonna disconnect it. We were at 19 and I'm still pretty much at 19. I'm moving a little bit back and forth, but I'm pretty much at 19. So it really didn't change. So the question I asked on the task sheet is why? And I would refer you back to the vacuum testing as a mechanical function. So is the mechanics on my piston going up and down the same whether I put fuel in or not? Is the throttle creating the same restriction whether I'm putting fuel in it or not? So I think with those two clues, you should be able to give me a good answer to that question. Next, I want to snap accelerate the engine on step three and vacuum should drop close to zero and then come back up. So let's see what it does when I snap it. And we can see vacuum comes down to zero and then goes higher than the 19 that we started with. I'll do it again. And we can see the same thing happen. It went all the way down to zero. It went to zero because we opened the throttle plate. Now my pressure is the same on this side as it is on this side of the throttle. The piston is pulling the air through on his downward motion with the intake valve open. So the air pressure on each side is equal. So that's why we got the result we did. The next step, it asked me to run, step four, run the engine at 2000 RPM for 30 seconds and record the vacuum present. Now normally my vacuum present 
should be the same or slightly higher than idle. So let's see what we get. And we're at 21 and pretty steady. So there we go, we saw we were 21 and very steady, and then we, at idle, we returned back to right around our 19. On step five, it wants me to do the same thing, to go to 2000 RPM again, but at this point, rapidly close the throttle. And what I'm looking for, is I'm looking for what's called deceleration vacuum. Deceleration vacuum should be higher than my 21. So let's see what we get. So let's go up and rev it up. stabilized it for about 20 seconds. I'm gonna drop the throttle and see how the vacuum rises a little bit. Only about one or two inches of mercury and that's very normal. Your book was very optimistic at 27. We're not gonna see that. Uh, keep in mind 30 is absolute vacuum. We can't get there. Uh, we normally see a one to two inch increase in vacuum uh, when we do that test. So that's perfectly normal. For step number seven, it says to stop the engine, disable the ignition or fuel system, and crank the engine, observe the vacuum during cranking. So I'm gonna turn our engine off, and my vacuum is gonna drop. So my vacuum is now dropped down, and we, you can see we've moved slightly off of the zero calibration with it. I'm gonna come over here and disconnect my electrical connector for my coils. So now my engine will not start. I still have some fuel in there, so I may get a little bit of speed up when I go to crank it. And now I'm gonna reach over and crank the engine, and let's see what kind of vacuum we get. We should get three to five inches. And I'm right about five inches. My gauge is a little bit out of calibration. I'm about at the one mark here. And so we can see that that is moving up. And so I can do it again. As the engine sped faster initially because the fuel, I had slightly higher with the fuel vapors. I got a pretty good crank out of it and I can do it one more time. Whoa. And that is because I had some restriction, probably water in the line causing the gauge not to act properly. So it got some initial vacuum and built it up. So since that was out of the range, that's not an accurate reading. So if I have more than is possible, something's wrong with the test. Either the idle air control valve is completely closed and so is the throttle, which is possible. Uh, something is hanging up the gauge, but my engine doesn't have that much vacuum on its own without one of the other variables changing. So let's try this again. And I believe that's gonna be a product of our idle air control motor actually going in and blocking that off, as well as I definitely have some stuff here, but my gauge is going back down pretty low. So we saw in the first couple numbers, we had a good read, couple good readings. Now I'm actually higher than I should be. I can try unplugging this to see if it changes that. And there we go. That was the idle air control motor causing the problem. You see, I only got about three inches of mercury there because the idle air control motor was spring loaded in the other position. So therefore, since there's no electrical signal going to it, I was able to get a test result in the accurate range. And very consistently, if we plug this back in, it may work normally or it may uh, still go high again. Let's see what we get. And there you go, you saw we had very high vacuum again, which proves it's the computer closing the idle air control valve, causing the vacuum to go higher and making our results not accurate. So I'd be fine putting in either four or five inches of mercury for the results on this test. And I'd say that mechanically, we have an engine that's in good condition. So after we're done that with that, we wanna reconnect our connector, start the car, and I may need to give it a little bit of throttle here to start, we'll see. And it's a little loaded up. You can see how low my vacuum is now. 
because that idle air control motor is out trying to keep it run. As it starts running better, or if I clear it out so it's running on all the cylinders again, because we kind of loaded up with fuel, we'll see our vacuum climb back up to our previous number after things adjust. I've made it a little mad by unplugging the IAC and doing that. So I'd really need to reset the uh, computer in order to get back to our previous numbers or give it time to learn, which is more than I'm gonna make you sit through this video for. So hopefully you got some information on how to do vacuum testing, where to hook the vacuum gauge up to, and what normal readings would be 